This, this is the ugly side of running a business. This is why 95% of all new businesses fail. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. Hey Bruce, where are we going this morning? Come on, you know where we're going. <laughs> we are going to one of Bruce's favorite spots today. All right, let's go, let's go. Ready to hit the road, Bruce? Yeah. Bruce is actually going to the vet today. Nothing's wrong with him, he's totally fine. It's just for his regular checkup and to get some shots and get caught up on all that sort of stuff so that he stays healthy and happy in all of our upcoming YouTube videos. You're actually the star, Bruce. Did you know that? You're actually the star. All right, so I dropped Bruce off at the vet, so he'll be there for a couple of hours at least. Thursdays are usually pretty chill for us, but it's also a day where we do a lot of like the boring <laughs> behind the scenes work, like accounting, getting into our books, making sure all the numbers match up and, and just stuff like that. This is all the stuff that we do every time we get a new stud stack member. And this morning we got three new members. That Q and A video really helped out. So if you guys signed up, let us know. Your stuff is in the mail. By the time you see this, probably is already at your door, but it's fun. We do a little arts and crafts. We do a handwritten letter. We do a stamp on the card and then we put in a little stud stack sticker. So obviously that's not why you sign up, but it's just, it's just nice to feel appreciated. Starting a business is really intimidating and scary. We want to make sure that everybody feels as comfortable and welcome and invited as possible. These are the best pens I've ever found. The only drawback is that they have a lid. They're not like a clicky pen, but these are the best pens. I'm left-handed, so my hand always smears the ink across the page. These dry really quickly. They last long. They're really soft. It, they're just, they're a great pen. I don't know if any of you get obsessive about your pens and pencils and stuff like I do, but this is it. Sell me this pen. You ever have those days where you just like, don't wanna do anything? Like I'm super happy to be doing this, but like, I just wanna crawl back into bed <laughs> and <laughs> just go back and to And watch sleep. a movie or something. Just, <sighs> yeah. All right, I know that nothing has happened in the video, but we just looked up and realized it's 3.30. It's an hour past when we're supposed to quit for the day. Sometimes that's just how these days go. Yeah. Like we have been doing boring, monotonous computer work all day long. And I couldn't even tell you what we were working on. I could tell you some of what I was working on. It's just not go exciting. It. It's not it. exciting. Basically I went in um, to QuickBooks, which is what we use to manage all of our sales and numbers and everything. I literally just matched transactions for the last like month. Basically just what did we spend and does it match what it said in QuickBooks and going through receipts. I have a whole filing system back there of fold. <gasps> Only the real ones will know. Do you guys remember these? Anyways, so yeah, I was just matching transactions, doing super boring finance stuff just to stay caught up. I got super confused, so I called our CPA, talked to her for a while. Riveting stuff here, I know, but if I don't do it, we're in trouble. So this is when the week kind of started to fall apart. 
this one bad day led to four or five bad days. It's not that anything bad happened, we just started to get really overwhelmed and kind of burned out. And when you're burned out, your brain goes to some really terrible places. Thoughts of doubt, uncertainty, anxiety, but most of all, we were just tired. We hadn't taken a day off since before Jenny came back from chasing Tropical Storm Peter. So Jenny goes from two very long, tough weeks of traveling and hurricane hunting, and then she comes right back into business full throttle. We're looking for a commercial space, we're interviewing potential employees, we're trying to post every day on YouTube, she even started making holiday sales. We were doing a lot of stuff as soon as she got back. And we were so excited for this little spurt of growth. It was so nice to come home to a schedule full of, of really good things that were happening and things that we were excited about. And we just thought, why not share this excitement and let it just overflow on YouTube and check that 100K box before the end of the year. But here's what happened. The daily videos backfired terribly. We did it for three weeks. It wasn't like we just tried it one day and said, oh, it didn't work. We did it for a whole month. So here's what happened. We made a little bit more money, but it was not proportional to the effort that we had to put into making videos every single day. Not only that, but every video was getting fewer views. Like I'll put it on screen here. You can see the video does great until YouTube stops serving it to people and then it just plateaus. And the most disappointing thing to us is that y'all couldn't celebrate with us. We've been doing this for such a long time and we finally put out a video realizing our biggest goal, our biggest pickle, the whole time we've been chasing this business and we can't even share it with y'all because YouTube won't propagate it to our entire audience who's been following along. We thought that by posting more often, more people would watch and YouTube would wanna serve the videos to more of our audience, but it didn't. And we were so wrapped up and concerned about the, the media business side of the house that it caused a tidal wave of sadness for four days and we didn't make any progress in the furniture business either. We were wrong. So as good responsible business owners, we need to admit it, own up to it, adjust and move forward and not make the same mistake again. Because this wasn't a problem with the algorithm or with YouTube. It was a problem with us. It was a problem with our false assumptions, with our lack of patience. We got a lot of work to do on ourselves to solve this problem. So we just need to readjust, move forward, and not make the same mistake again. We're gonna go back to not caring about the numbers on YouTube because that seems to be a much better strategy than when we do care about the numbers on YouTube. This this is the ugly side of running a business and entrepreneurship. You find out that you are actually your own worst enemy. You have nobody to blame but yourself and you are responsible for everything, even if it's not your fault. This is why 95% of all new businesses fail. People say, well, I didn't sign up for this. People are unwilling to learn and work on improving themselves. They want to be good enough just the way that they are. They don't want to do the things that they don't want to do. That's why they quit their first job and started a business is because they thought they were going to get out of doing whatever it was that they were scared or hated doing in the first place. So what do we do now? Now that we're faced with yet another flaw in ourselves, do we give up? Do we throw out everything? Do we get a real job and blame that career opportunity as the reason that we stopped running the business? Probably not, at least not yet. There's massive potential here in this business. We just gotta get all our ducks in the row and get out of the business's way. But we are getting rid of an insane, arbitrary, silly video schedule. We'll release a video when an update makes sense, whether that's once a day, three times a week, once a week, once every two weeks, whatever. Hit the bell to make sure you don't miss any of them. But we're no longer gonna hold ourselves to an arbitrary schedule. I'm sorry if this video sort of bummed you out, but it would be unfair for us to talk only about the fun things that happen without showing you the stuff that's, you know, the nitty gritty. That's why the title of this video is what it is. But if you wanna see a more exciting video to pick you up after this one, you can watch this one right here. It's where we tour seven massive commercial spaces and get an idea of what our shop is gonna look like in the future. So check that out and uh, yeah, we'll see you on the next one. Ask me how I do it, I just stick to the bed.